Hi everybody, it's Ruth. Um, happy to be back to tell you guys about my 10 month update after having my du my double lung transplant last year in March of um, 2020. Um, it's definitely been a roller coaster. The first thing I wanna do is apologize because um, I haven't really been posting much and I didn't realize it was a big deal to people who were like, we don't know how you're doing. You haven't said anything. Um, are you okay? And you know, some people were like, what happened? Are you like, how are you doing? And I was like, oh, okay, maybe. I was like, and that was like a couple months ago and I was like, I probably should post another video. Um, but a lot of has happened since then. And um, I guess I just wasn't like feeling up to it at the time, but I was like, hey, let me, I need to really make sure that I get this done <laughs> sooner than later, at least before my one year mark. Um, so I'm really sorry about that. I'm not really good with social media, like in terms of like posting all the time and stuff like that. Cause I just feel like maybe it's not that interesting. Um, I, I, but I'll try, I'm trying a little bit harder. Mostly I post memes and stuff, which isn't very uh, informative, but, um, you know, I'm trying to get like into it on Facebook a little bit and on Instagram and stuff. So yeah, I gotta, I'm kind of like an introvert. So I am not, you know, it's not to me when stuff is going on or if I'm somewhere or if I'm doing something, the last thing I'm thinking about is, oh, I gotta take a picture or take a video. It's usually just like, oh, oh yeah, we probably should have took a picture of that or made a video of this when it happened. But yeah, it's a bad habit. So I have to use get used more to like documenting moments better and stuff like that. Just, you know, for the future, you know, you can look back and be like, wow, you know, we went through all this and yeah. Um, so I wanna try to make this update short. It's a lot to cover, so um, yeah, I just want to start from where we started last time. Trimmers, so um, trimmers, like I was saying, with your hands shaking or your body shaking, my trimmers went away, like, I think, like, after most of them, like, for after two months, and then slowly, but, like, they would be, like, very sporadic, like, happen, like, once a week or something. Obviously, now they're completely gone, so like I said, um, most... Uh, most pay for most people the trimmers go away and then some people you know they have them forever I think might be wrong but um yeah for most people they go away mine's went away and um I barely even noticed when it went away to be honest so I'm just saying like around two months like I didn't see it anymore um uh oily skin so oily skin yeah my skin is still pretty oily uh still trying to try to do the same stuff um, I don't know, I guess like I used to, like I said, I took, I went on a cycle of Accutane to help with my, um, acne back in the day. So yeah, I felt like the surgery kind of reversed all that. Um, but at least I don't get acne. So, you know, it is what it is. You're shiny, you're shiny like a penny. So, um, my hair grew back, I guess for the most part. Um, yeah, I grew back. Like I don't have, um, the bald spots. Uh, kind of grew back and um especially in the front I posted pictures on Instagram so yeah I've seen improvement with that and it's not falling out as much so over time it seems to have gotten better so I'm hoping that eventually you know my hair kind of bounces out um sorry I'm looking down because I actually wrote stuff down this time because usually I'm like thinking 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 and then I forget stuff um memory loss short-term memory loss like I was talking about last time so short-term memory loss it's gotten i mean it kind of like went away i feel like my memory is kind of like a normal person obviously you're going to forget stuff but before i would like forget you know if i did something like five minutes ago ten minutes ago and i'd be like oh did we do this they'd be like yeah we did that or did oh did we go this place yet and they'd be like yeah you did that so that's just kind of like the effects and um luckily for me it wore off and i think for most people it wears off um after a while um well, okay, so I kind of want to talk a little bit about, like, current things. I guess, like, at least some of the stuff that I remember. So much has happened since we moved back to Miami. We're from Miami, so, um, and we were in North Carolina for, I would say, eight months. So when we came back home, so much things happened, and I kind of just, like, tried to write down the things that I can at least remember that were significant. One thing that um, was significant that I noticed was severe depression, like, I don't know what happened um, in North Carolina. It was fine. Um, you know, like it's a big change and stuff like that. 
and you know you realize like the sacrifices that you have to make and things you have to do but um and you know the responsibilities you now have but i don't know it just kind of came like surprisingly a little bit out of nowhere well not really out of nowhere um after my first bout with um rejection that's kind of like when it happened and after that like for like two months anytime i got like bad news it was just like my mood just shifted and i was just like i would just be out of it for several days and um i would have like mood swings like one day like you know 10 minutes 10 minutes before like i'm fine um, I'm making jokes. I'm doing, I'm regular me. Then later on, I'm just like a different person. Like I'm sad, you know, I want to be by myself. I'm just like, I just did not feel like myself. And I could tell like I was, I was not interested in stuff that I'm, I usually do like my interests and stuff like that or any of my like hobbies and stuff. So I knew that there was, um, at first I thought that was just like, Oh, I'm just being emotional. I'm just being like sad, you know, and stuff like that about like, stuff that's going on but um after a while i was like this is um you know i kind of started to notice the patterns and stuff and then my husband was saying he was like yeah man you, you like you get really down and stuff when certain things happen or sometimes for no reason at all and i was like yeah and then after a while i did notice the patterns and i was like yeah that's like weird you know what i mean so um but after a while actually it went away and then it was how long did it last like two months and then i went online and i was kind of like looking it up because i felt like like i was like i i just thought like this has to do something with the medications or the i don't know right so i actually looked it up and it's actually very common for transplant patients to go through bouts of depression and when i asked other people about it they said they went through the same thing so i was like okay i'm not the only person i thought it was just me and i thought i was just being emotional or sad about something going on but really in reality yeah this is like a real thing that happens to people so but i'm happy that i got through it um if you or a family member is experiencing depression as a result of transplant or as a result of the medications that you might be taking then um if it persists or it gets really bad then obviously you should seek medical um you should see a you know psychologist or a medical you know doctor or something like that um specialist i'm sorry but uh i did not um i felt like it got better over time but had it not i probably would have had to because it, i was just not my normal self and um i could feel that i was not my normal self so um i think it was kind of like exasperated by you know covid and not being able to go out because i am immunocompromised so I, you know, unfortunately I spend most of my time home and I'm not really like much of a home body. I'm usually out and about. Before transplant, I was always like out and about, you know? So um, this was definitely, you know, a big change to always be home all the time. And then, you know, dealing with transplant and stuff like that. Um, so I think that kind of, you know, added to it um, and kind of like transitioning back to normal life. So we got back home to um, Miami, back to Florida um, in August and kind of like dealing with everything all at once. Um, so yeah, it was it was quite a bit, but I'm happy that we were able to move past that. Um, I experienced moving on to rejection. Um, I experienced rejection five months in, I think it was even a six month mark. I think it was five months in. Um, everybody was kind of surprised even the doctors and you know um our medical team was a little bit surprised but it does happen and um yeah it was hard um to come to realization that hey you know you could be doing everything right and um you could feel like you're doing everything right and you're taking all the precautions and you're on it and you're trying to take all your medications and stuff but yeah these things can still happen you can still have these things can um, still, you know, occur. So I think that was like a big thing that kind of, you know, added to the depression of like not feeling in control. Cause like with CF, you're already like, you already don't feel in control. You don't feel in control of what's happening. Like you could be taking all your meds and you could be doing everything you're supposed to do. And it sucks, you know, you're vulnerable and you can still get sick. And I felt like all that anxiety coming back, like the constant anxiety that I had when I had CF was coming back, like, 
you know, now after transplant, you know, so it was kind of like a lot to deal with. Um, but luckily now um, I went to my appointments um, last week and now is my 10th, my 10th month, month mark. And luckily um, it's gone. The, the rejection is gone. So uh, me and my family are really happy about that. And we're kind of like just praying that, you know, this is not like a natural occurrence and things like that. It's unfortunately not something that you can control. So, you know, it is what it is. But I think that kind of like made the depression worse, you know. Um, and I, I wanted to talk a little bit about my chronic pain. Again, it's not something I think that affects everyone. But just in case there's somebody that has had a transplant and you are watching um, and you want to know how I'm doing. Um, I still have the chronic pain. I think I've kind of get, gotten used to it. I don't really take anything for it because um, all of the things that they gave me, I felt like it didn't work. And I'm the kind of person that if it's um, a voluntary or elective type of medication and it's not working, I just won't take it. So I just kind of deal with it day by day and um, just kind of cope with it and just, you know, I try to figure out like things that might make it worse and stuff like that. And I just try to avoid those things or those activities, um, which is, you know, not very much. And if I have to do something like, you know, a hundred push-ups or something like that, then I know for the rest of the day, I'm going to be a pain. So I already know, like, don't plan to do a whole bunch of stuff after you finish doing your 100 push-ups. Just an example, but you know, whatever, you know, whatever can exas exasperate it. Um, so in addition to that, I wrote some common questions that people usually ask me um, or things that people are like wondering about, um, just like questions that people always ask me all the time. So just to answer a couple of them, I know I said it's a Q&A, obviously it's not a Q&A, but I'm just answering common questions. Um, how often do you have to go to the doctor after transplant? It really depends on how well you're going on how well you're doing. So it may be in the beginning, obviously it's going to be frequent. So it may be from like once or twice a week and then as time goes on it gets less frequent until like i think it's like once a year or once every two years correct me if i'm wrong but i've heard you know maybe like once every year like has a checkup you know after you know obviously a long period of time but it really depends some people have to be there every month some people have to be there every two some people have to be there every six so it depends on how you're doing um if you're doing good the farther away the appointments are um do you have to take pills forever uh there are certain medications that you have to take for the rest of your life yes um so it is what it is in the beginning you're gonna have a lot more medications and you know as time goes on it becomes less like for me it has become a lot less and things like that so which is good so but just be on the lookout if you're gonna get a transplant or you know a family member is gonna get a transplant yes there are some medications that you have to take forever and you will have to get um, used to that. Um, number three, are you in a nursing home? Like people would like DM me or call me and be like, oh, are you in a nursing home? And I'd be like, what? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But either way, I'm not in a nursing home. I'm back home. All right. I'm back home. Uh, number four, can you walk? Yes, I can walk. I walk. I do whatever I need to do. I do my hobbies. I do my chores around the house, whatever. Um, I take walks like almost every day, you know, so I just try to stay active, you know, and if I go out, I just take my precautions, but no, I'm not just laying around. Um, number, oh, number four also, can you work? Yes, I can work. Yes, I do work part-time from home. So yes, I can work. 